It's Edgar Allan Poe. Do you have a picture right there? You may have to scoot back further to get the full effect, you know? Yeah, of the whole picture. She thought you went inside. I did it. Oh no. Come on. It's, it's hot out here. Yeah. I know, that's what I was telling you. <laughs> it is the pico. So he became Edgar Allan Poe. Now, Edgar was quite the drinker. Um, a, yeah. a lot of people know that. And every time you see them, see him in this house, he is, does have a bottle in his hand and he is acting a bit drunk. Um, he did try to go to West Point, the school, the military school. But because of his drinking, he kind of failed out. Um, for our purposes, for Lady Luck, after he failed out of West Point, he decided, OK, well, I've got to get out of here. Where should I go? He goes to a train station, and there is a poster for Boston, and there is a poster for Baltimore. Now, Baltimore is where he had family and where he was from. So if he went to Baltimore, he wouldn't really have to work as hard. He'd have some money, have some support. If he went to Boston, he'd be on his own. Um, the ticket seller was actually Lady Luck, and she said, hey, can you hurry up? Make a decision. I've got a line. So he chose to go to Baltimore. Now, when he went back to Baltimore in real life, historical fact, um, at the age of 26, he married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia. That was okay back in those days. Um, he married her, and unfortunately, soon after that, she uh, caught consumption or tuberculosis and died at a very early age. And that is what is said to have influenced a lot of his dark and gothic works. Now, before he died, that day before, actually, he was found in the streets wearing somebody else's clothes drunk out of his mind and mumbling incoherently. So Edgar Allan Poe essentially went mad. He died a day later and they never really knew the cause of death. His cause of death is still kind of unknown, but they just assumed back in those days that he went crazy or he went mad and that's what he died from. Now the great thing is if you're a huge Edgar Allan Poe fan, you will love this house. The not so great thing is if you're not a huge Edgar Allan Poe fan, this house really won't be for you. There's a lot of neat effects. There's a lot of references to his stories and to his life in general. But if you don't know that, you might not care about this house. That being said, I love this house. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really well done. Um, I'll tell you more as we go in, but this house is fantastic. You will meet Edgar uh, himself right here the first time. Bottle in hand, of course, acting a little mad, not completely crazy yet. As you go through, you'll see That's pages. All of the pages here are written and they're like his work. So it's not like, hey, Virginia, what's up? Miss you, babe. It's actually his work. Um, so there's the telltale heart. This is the story of Annabelle Lee. So as you go through, you can kind of look at that. But we're going to move into the room where everybody who has a flashlight, pull it out. Do you see pictures? Yeah. Oh, no. It's your, oh, I'm getting a battery.
above my chamber door. Wait, no, you freak out. Shine your flashlight. Oh, uh-oh. Is the rug up? No, it's just, okay. I'm like, what is it? Picture of my hair. Good one. Oh, and if you guys can just do me a favor, move in just a little bit closer. Once you grab maturity, yeah, that's tight. Smush everybody in here. Getting guys. So the other one. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been bad. Yeah. Oh, there's somebody standing there. There isn't actually. There's not an ops person in this room. This is an intramural risk room. Is everybody back there? Can you guys move in just a tad bit more? I just want everybody to move. Oh, you scared the crap out of me. The house isn't even operational. I'm not supposed to be scared yet. Okay, this is the Telltale Heart Room. In the story of the Telltale Heart, the narrator, this guy right here, kills a man because he has a vulture eye, which I think is a very good reason. Why else would you kill somebody rather than the fact that they have a really gross eye? The man with the vulture eye does appear right here. If you see him, I think he kind of looks like Albert Einstein. He has white hair and a very large eye, but that's just me um, talking. <laughs> um, so he kills the guy, cuts him into little itty bitty pieces, and puts him in the floorboard. Well, he kind of goes a little bit crazy and swears that he can still hear the man's beating heart. Um, now what happens if any of you have ever done something you shouldn't have done, which I'm sure everybody in this room has, unless you're an angel, in that case, I applaud you for coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Um, yeah, when you it. feel guilty about something, it is always there. It's always in the back of your mind and it's always repeating itself. Like, hey, you're going to get caught. Hey, you remember you did this? Hey. That's why this room is repetitive, why it is repeated on all the walls except for this one. So that is why creative wanted the repetition. When you walk into this room and it is operational, the heart does beat, so there is that goo 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 So you have the repetition of the heart paired with the repetition of the scene in multiple places. Um, the really great thing about this room, though, is m most of the time in past years, we've added uh, black fabric to the top of most of the rooms in our houses to make them darker. We've tried to get away from that, mostly because we have to put fire retardant on them every time we do that. It has to be done every week so that we are up to fire standard and fire codes. That becomes a lot to do over the course of the run. So we've kind of got away from putting fabric on the top, and we just do a lot more with lighting than we have in the past. However, because of the repetition that Creative wanted for this room, we, we can't put fire retardant up here. We actually had to put sprinklers. So this room has sprinklers, one there and one there. So if the water effects in all of the houses don't get you and you walk in this house and it's on fire, you will get wet in this house. <laughs> um, take all the pictures you want. The next hallway we're going to walk into is also rather dark. Um, but you guys don't need your flashlights if you don't want to. I've got mine. It's fun in winter because it's cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. stuff off during the day or to keep the characters cooler. Is everybody back here? Sweet. This is the Raven hallway. Uh, the Raven is one of Edgar Allan Poe's most famous works. That's the one usually people know if they don't know anything else. They know, quote, the Raven nevermore. 
Um, this hallway is kind of reminiscent of the Dracula psychoscarapy hallway that we've done in the past because there are windows on the side with curtains that drape so that people can scare you. The difference being this year we put the characters in the window sills instead of reaching through the windows. There are three ravens, one in each window, and they do reach down to get you. They are in full raven costume with the beak and the feathers and all of that wonderful stuff. Also in this hallway, we stole an effect from an attraction we have here. Have you guys seen Twister? Yeah. <laughs> okay. In that attraction, there is a scene where the little restaurant over on the left-hand side, the windows break because the Twister is in full force and it breaks the windows. The way we create that is we splash some water, we strobe a light on it, and we make that sound like glass shattering, and your brain thinks we've just smashed glass. That's not true. It's just water and a strobe effect effect we actually recreate right here. This is supposed to be a very large gothic window with a lightning storm going on behind it because of course it wouldn't be a dark and creepy story without a dark and stormy night. Um, but then we just make the sound like the glass is shattering, splash some water, and we strobe affect it and you get wet as you go by and you think that the window has broken. Um, if you guys all went through the houses and those of you that didn't just be forewarned, all of the houses this year are very very, very, very wet. <laughs> so bring a poncho. So you, can't oh, win. You. <laughs> you can't win by staying outside. You can't win by outside. Why should I run in the spot by right? Whoa. <laughs> what did you say? How do you learn that lab? A pit in the pendulum. pendulum uh, portion of this house. In that story, um, a, a war prisoner from the uh, Spanish Inquisition, it wakes up in a pitch black room. All he has is his senses to be able to figure out where he is. He gets up and he makes a loop around the room. Um, it ends up being a hundred paces around and he figures out there's a pit in the middle of it. Um, however, since he's a prisoner of war, he really has no food, he hasn't been fed, so he passes out. And when he wakes back up, he is strapped to a table with a pendulum swinging overhead. Now they were nice enough, even though they strapped him to the table, to give him some food. Well, he uses the food, puts it on the ropes that has tied him down, and the rats come and eat the ropes away. So he escapes right before the pendulum does this. Um, when he escapes, he falls into that pit, but however, one of his buddies, his amigos, somebody coming to save him, grabs him and catches him from the pit. Um, but basically, the story is how you can use your senses. We use your senses here a lot at Universal. Smell is your strongest sense that the human body has. It triggers memories and thoughts and all of that wonderful stuff. Um, in the past, we've used feces, blood. The blood uh, scent is actually more of a taste. You breathe it in and then you taste that penny coppery taste in your mouth, which is a lot of fun, but uh, people didn't like it because, you know, not a lot of people like the taste of blood unless they're vampires. So this year, one of our stronger smells is in the HR Blood and Guts house um, in the Thanks Killing Room. There's a nice odor of turkey, pumpkin, and burnt flesh. Because Granny's the turkey, so it can't just be a nice turkey smell. You've also got to smell that burnt flesh smell. So kind of about, a, this story is about how you use your senses and how we like to use yours. Um, so earlier, one of the guests who's been here before and was here last year 
asked me about a uh, guest activated trigger. We have a couple different types of triggers here. Some of them are non-actor activated, which means it's just on a loop. Every 15, 45 seconds, two minutes, something happens just on a loop. Nobody has to trigger that effect. We also have an actor activated trigger, which is the things I've been showing you, the foot pedals, all of that, and that triggers a certain effect. Last year, we had a guest activated trigger. It was in the psychotherapy house. It was this huge red button that mm -hmm. would just make something happen. It would actually have a drop door come down and you could see Jack the Clown, which was one of our former icons. We did not bring them back this year. I do not know why. Nobody has said why. My thought was when I stood outside the psychotherapy house, that button was hit literally every 15 seconds. The door would drop and you would hear this loud noise, like this loud ringing noise. I'm pretty sure characters got annoyed with that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That would be my guess. I'm not saying that's right. That would just be what I would think why they're not bringing it back. Because our characters go through a lot. Uh, a loud ringing noise every 15 seconds would <laughs> probably drive me insane. And I would end up like Poe. So, um, but... Faces look harder. You got in the way, mother. <laughs> Did you scare yourself? No. You look in the mirror. Ah! Oh, that's just. Did these turn? They do turn. And the ones that are coupled. Why are they scary looking? I think it was the Mask of the Red Death, probably. Yeah. Okay. As you guys come into this room, this is the Mask of the Red Death. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> In the story of the Mask of the Red Death, um, Prospero, who is the main character, has a lot of money and a lot of rich friends. And none of them are suffering from the Red Death, which is this plague where you get pustules and they bleed all over your face and you're dizzy. None of them are suffering from that, but a lot of the town is. So they decide to lock themselves in this grand ballroom and have a masquerade. What better way to celebrate the dying of the not so fortunate? Um, they have a masquerade ball and enters a, there enters a man in a red suit. Um, and he is the mask of the Red Death. Every person that this man encounters dies. It's essentially a story about how you cannot outrun death. Um, in this room, there are, of course, masquerade couples. The ones that do not have a partner, of course, have a character. Um, oh, hi! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> okay. Um, they, of course, have a character. Uh, the Mask of the Red Death will come out here, and he is in a red costume. If anybody has ever seen the Phantom of the Opera musical or not, um, during the masquerade scene, that's the perfect homage to this particular cool. story because the Phantom comes out in a red costume with a skull and he is supposed to be the Red Death while they're having a masquerade. Um, we're going to move on in just a minute. We're crossing paths with Creative that's also in here, um, but we're going to go into one of my favorite, my absolute favorite rooms in this house. Are we going, are you coming this way? Okay, awesome. awesome. I'm really sorry. No, you're all right. You're right. <laughs> After you. Please continue. What's up, guys? You mean his cousin? Cousin Wayne. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. He's pretty much a picture, you see that? Mm-hmm. 
1920s in Germany. If anybody ever saw Nosferatu or the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, those are the best two examples of that style of filmmaking. They didn't have a lot of money, so what they would do instead of building elaborate sets with elaborate lighting, if they needed a set with a shadow on it, they would just paint the shadow on the wall. Or if they needed a light, they'd take some white paint and paint the light on the wall instead of paint, you know, instead of actually getting lights and shadows and dealing with all that because that can be a bit of a pain. Um, and it's also a very angular stylization. If you look over here, especially at the windows, you can see they're kind of geometric in forms. Um, so it, that's a very popular style. We used this in the Frankenstein house a couple of years ago. That house was this type of style as well. As you can tell, we painted our ravens on the wall instead of like in the raven hallway where there's the actual little birds. We've actually just painted them on the wall. Um, and Poe in here is, of course, crazy. He's supposed to be wearing a very angular type coat, like it's supposed to have angles that come out, shoulder pads that make it look angular. It's gray, he's crazy, it's awesome. And of course, as you walk out, you will see some of the characters from that you've seen previous in the house, like the Mask of the Red Death. Um, there's a raven in here. I've seen a corpse, Virginia. Um, my favorite part of this room has nothing to do with anything that creative has ever told me. But when I walked into this room and I saw these windows, if you have seen Beetlejuice, I always think of when the little guy comes out of the fireplace to marry Lydia and uh, Beetlejuice. That's what I think of when I see that. And I love Beetlejuice. So that's just my little personal favorite thing. So take your pictures and we will move on to the Forsaken. Oh, <laughs> see? <laughs> what, are you trying to scare her? Uh. 